G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle. Uh, first things first, I'm actually painting uh, right near where our dog door is. So you'll probably hear my boy coming in and out a few times through the video. So apologies if you do, but hey, he's living his best life. So today we're going to be painting some terrain. And I've got a few different pieces on the table here. But the main one I'm going to focus on is this one here. Uh, Necron Pylon that I 3D printed. In fact, I printed all of this terrain. Uh, these all come via Sacramundus, uh, who you can get to on Patreon, and I purchased the STLs for these files. Well, the STLs are the files, I should say. Uh, so here's one of the ones I've been working on. It's the uh, decent generator and a broken one, glued to a piece of masonite with epoxy, because epoxy just does the best job, to be honest. Uh, all I've done so far is some textured paint and base coat them with spray can. Painted silver with the orange uh, gem because these are in power down mode. So I thought orange for power down, kind of like red light. And a uh, little tiny, tiny little bit of source light glow around them. And I've made a few of these up. So I'll have uh, one with a full pair and two of these ones with a half ruined, half good pair. So that's been fun. And what I want to do is try and go through how to paint things simply. I think people find terrain in general to be quite a complex thing, very daunting because of the size of it. And I want to do this the easiest way possible. So you'll notice that all these buildings are two-toned. Uh, the two tones is just to add a little visual variety. But this is done with a spray can. So that's the first thing. This is not uh, airbrushed or anything like that. This is the simplest terrain tutorial I can do. It doesn't need to be the prettiest terrain. It's all about what is easiest and what is accessible to the average person who maybe you don't have a lot of money to spend on terrain or again, daunting. You think I need an airbrush. I need to have all these special tools and techniques. No, 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 nothing like that. So starting item, this here. Again, I've painted just in silver, and it's dull silver as well, very watered down, uh, so it's more grey than silver at the moment. I'll go in later and add some, some silver detailing in, perhaps, to really make it pop. But at the moment, keeping it very simplistic. You can also see a uh, large Necron pyramid I've been working on. I'll grab a miniature for some scale here. This is my uh, white metal Tigris from the 1990s on 32 mil base. So yeah, pretty damn big. It's a lot bigger than a monolith. In fact, it's about the size of almost four Land Raiders across a uh, big footprint. Also, I actually printed it and it's hollow. And I even put a Necron sarcophagus into the center of it. So this is obviously a large complex bit of uh, line of sight blocking terrain. This specifically is to go in the center of a table, is uh, what I've decided I'm going to do with it. A uh, real centerpiece of the table, and obviously it's also got the, the glowing orange gems around it and such. Now again, simplicity. I, uh, this is not uh, complex what I'm doing here. So. What I've done is, I believe it's duck egg blue or duck egg grey is the spray can colour. And then I've just used a bone colour over the top of that to add some visual variety to it. Now the paints we're going to be using, again, we've got a uh, white spirits here. We also have some uh, weathering solvent, or some just solvent, I can call it. Some contrast paint, some wild wood. I'll tell you why I've chosen that later. I've also got some uh, burnt umber oil colour, and this is cheap oils. This is what you can get from the local hobby store. This isn't like expensive uh, Windsor & Newton or something like that. Same with the uh, paint brushes. The various brushes I've got for today are all cheapos from the hobby store. Uh, ones, uh, uh, these blue ones came in like a packet of half a dozen brushes for like five dollars. They're really cheap, um, but it doesn't matter. It's for terrain. You're not trying to paint it to a prize winning level. If you are, this is not the tutorial for you. So, I've also got some tweezers, some old bits of sponge, some pipettes in case I wanna pull some fluids out of stuff like water over here and the white spirits. 
also got some little uh these are off the side of paint pellets and they're just attached to a base at the moment these i've pre-mixed in one of them a burnt umber with a tiny smidge of black uh, and thinned it out so i can use it as a wash later perhaps it just gives me a portable pellet that i can put a lid on and prevent from spilling and such the tweezers is so if i need to i can get the sponge in into places like uh inside here for instance where maybe my fat fingers would would struggle to get into so this is all stuff that anyone can buy really cheap probably twenty dollars worth of materials on the table and that's paint brushes paints the works i think this is the most expensive thing on the table is this pot of uh wildwood contrast paint so First things first, uh, why Wildwood? Uh, so Wildwood I chose because it is a, a contrasting color. So I could sponge weather this with any sorts of colors. I could use blues, whites, grays, whatever. By picking a brown, uh, it already leads us into that sort of rusty territory and such. Um, so that's, you know, really helpful to start with. So I'm just gonna put a little bit out in this just scrap masonite. And I'm going to get a bit of sponge. Now, the thing with sponge is we want it to be uneven. So I'm just tearing it. By tearing the sponge and having an uneven um, sponge, what happens is you get some uh, better shapes and profiling. If it's completely flat, you'll get a repetitive pattern. Just let a little more light into the room. See what we're working on a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of this brown and we're going to sponge it now we don't just sponge the surface we're going to sponge along the edges in fact it's a warm day and it's very quickly uh, drying the paint so sponging the edges here okay because the edges of things are usually where items get contacted rubbed whatever things chip off so they're the points we want to focus on when it comes to weathering. So you can see there, um, I'll zoom in a bit and that'll probably make it easier to see. So just sponging on the edge, we don't want a heap of material, uh, very, very wet sponge because it'll just simply apply too much. We want to go all the way down and around back up the corner like so okay so as i was saying i um previously went and just spray painted straight out of a can these are dulux colors um they're chalky so because i've gone for a chalky color it's um already very matted down which helps good thing about this kind of chipping as well is it, it doesn't matter if you do get sections like here where we're onto this because we'll work with that later and that'll help us to add some some sort of streaking and such to it oh what's a necron stone monolith thingy a pylon why would it rust yeah look it probably wouldn't guys um <laughs> to be honest but it looks good, so rule of cool, you know. Now, as I say, terrain is a daunting thing. We, it, you've got to strike a balance between what's practical to paint and play on on a tabletop, and what reality um, says time-wise and such. So, we all think about like some Forge World awesome epic table with you know. East Van 5 or something like that. And I mean, yeah, sure, that is the goal. We all want a table like that, but the downside of them is they're not practical to play on. Their terrain is just too busy. There's lots of hills and bits of rubble on the ground. Models balance on them poorly, things like that. Sorry, I'll get back into focus here. Um, so we, we want to stay away from that sort of thing. 
because it's just not useful to you as an actual person playing on the tabletop. So that's where, you know, the, the balance lies. Uh, I also want to nail just a bit around these. Now again, trying to layer it onto the edges. Uh, next door neighbor is home today and doing a heap of power tools work. So I do really apologize for that. That's out of my control and I'm trying to get content out when I have spare time and today I've got some time. Um, also, just around these. Bits of metallic pylon. It doesn't matter if we get a bit on there, you know, rub it with my thumb. Because we want it to be a bit dirty and grimy. Almost like, you know, something out of Necromunda. Um, we can come along later and just stipple or sponge a little bit onto the silver areas as well. And that'll help pick them up, but... There you go, that's what we're looking at for our sponging. So, nice and simple. Okay, so, I'll just do this edge as well. It needs a little more. Cool. So, what we want to do now is we want to do some rusting, some streaking, some stuff like that. So that's where our oil colors come in. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil paint down so I can just pull from it as I need it. And I'm going to take one of these uh, spare metal containers and I'm going to put some white spirits in it. Now I'm gonna need this white spirits and I'll probably need some solvent as well, to be honest, um, as we go. in the tip of the brush okay so again this is not what you do on a a model that you're painting up for like a prize competition but for terrain to get a certain look this is fine so you can see here we have some chipping that's on the main surface so from there I'm just going to use some of this oil paint and I'm just going to paint a bit of a streak now that's a very dark, strong, prominent streak right now. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of sponge with a tiny bit of white spirits on it. And wipe it down. And just like that, we've thinned out that streak quite a bit. And so we're going to go along and apply this to, you know, different spots. Um, this same technique that same bit of sponge, like so. And by doing that, we're, we're going to do something to break up the surface, make this thing a little bit less homogenous. Lots and lots of stuff going on here. Now again, this is not how I would do it if I was doing a model for a competition to paint up, but for the purposes of tutorials and such, um, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Because uh, again, we want to remove the daunting nature of painting terrain from it. We want to make it easy for people. We want this to be something that everyone feels that they can achieve. Um, this is not aimed at the master hobbyist. If you want to get really good at painting stuff, talk to someone like Miles at Little Legend Studios. Um, you could talk to um, the Cult of Paint guys, and they'll tell you everything you need to know about, you know, painting models and such uh, in informative classes and lessons and things like that. But, you know, we're, we're not doing that here today. I'm aiming this at the total beginner. So, and so I'm going to go around and continue this, this method uh, in lots of different spots on this model. Again, it doesn't have to be the prettiest in the world. Because remember, there are, there are time constraints when painting stuff. 
And straight away, we're just adding a heap more wife to this, uh, can we call it a monolith still? I mean, it is one homogenous pylon, right? I think it counts as a monolith. Maybe it's just not a monolith, it's in the unit, the monolith. So, getting uh, lots of stuff on there. You know, um, one of the things you'd do if this was like a competition model or something is you'd put lots of different colours on there, and you can, you can. Uh, I'm just using burnt umber because it's, you know, lazy and easy way. But you could go along and add greens and whites and other colours, just real soft amounts. You'd usually use a drier oil paint for that, not a wet one. Cause, but again, this is, this is cheap. This is what the average person... It's going to get from their local art store. It's not like a $70 set of oils. It's like a $5 set of oils. Um, it wouldn't be a very good tutorial on my behalf if um, I said, oh, no, you need to go out and buy $400 worth of paints um, for your first ever terrain project. Uh, <laughs> would it now? So... So, a bit strong there, that's okay. We can just thin it out, we've got plenty of time. I can also get some of that, that solvent. Um, oh jeez, get into focus camera. So, a bit like that, and I'll do one more side. We'll go, go for a bit of a, a wider pattern here. And it looks ugly, right? It looks ugly and inefficient to paint this way, but it actually works pretty damn well, um, I find anyway. Generally, you streak in uh, away so that it blends away from the model. Um, I'm just using a bit of old sponge, but like a, a brush, like a nice wide brush, uh, white spirits on it, but very, very dried out. Works quite well. So I'll zoom out and you'll get an idea now of what we're looking at. So that's, what, 15 minutes of work, essentially, on this pylon to get it to this stage. And frankly, I reckon it looks half bad. So what are we going to do next? Well, the next thing we're going to do on this pylon is we're going to add some uh, washes to it. So I'll use this same paintbrush. Um, I have... Uh, like I said, got a wash thing prepared earlier, which is just uh, some quite thin down oil paint. Um, pretty much a, a very watery consistency. Um, now again, it doesn't need to be the prettiest in the world. I'm just going along with this wash, just getting it into a few recesses um, along the miniature. Naturally, if I gloss this miniature up, I'm going to get the best results because the the gloss will help the paint to flow better. As you can see, it flows along the capillaries just fine, but the gloss will help it go better and stop it from moving and staining other areas. But I want it to stain other areas because this is I want this to be really grimy, lived-in feeling terrain. So that is the the feel I'm going for here with these washes. So, I'm, and I'm putting on a lot, to be honest, at once. But, again, dirty, nasty, grimy. And it hides the crimes. It hides your little mistakes as you've worked on the project. The things you've got wrong. Um, uh, any little blemishes in the surface, maybe failures of the print, or where you've spilt a little glue. I don't know um, what people have done with their personal terrain how well they built it, how badly they built it. But straight away, things like this really add just that bit of extra life um, to a miniature. So, again, don't care if it uh, slaps and stains because we're not golden demon here, guys. This is the way you paint, like your first ever project. You know, this could be just a bit of polystyrene painted by hand, okay? And all the things we're doing today would still apply. Um, I wouldn't spray paint it uh, because it'll dissolve it somewhat. 
but um, you know, got these nice stains and it just adds a bit of life because um, grime and grit it gathers in these these crevices uh, on on real life statues and ob obelisks and such. So they're the areas that I really want to focus on. I've still got that bit of sponge and I can come along and again, just um, just adds a bit of life. And then I'll lastly uh, get into some of these metal areas and throw a bit of wash in on those. Because we're not looking to make the, uh, I've really got to emphasize the point. The creme de la creme of terrain. No, no, we want effective terrain, okay? I could sit here, work on this for five hours, uh, highlight around every little chip, every little edge and nook, and yeah, it'll look, it'll look pretty good. But is that efficient when you're painting, like in my case, dozens and dozens and dozens of bits of terrain for an event? Well, no, I've got 14 tables to do, so I'm not going to do that. So, simple. I think people get really um, daunted in general by the hobby. They expect that everything has to be done to like Golden Demon standard and um, they look for too high a contrast perhaps, things like that. And um, really, you, you can be really simple guys. Like I say, this is about $20 worth of stuff and you know, this, this terrain is gonna look great at the end of this um, tutorial so doesn't have to be perfect besides perfect boring okay perfect is is more what I expect from the company not from the player from the player I just expect a little effort um, and I'll add some just little bits of washes in and around these surfaces Just, again, just to add that little bit of life into the miniature. It doesn't have to be... Um, you don't have to get into every single crevice, okay? You just want to get some color on there just to add some tonal variation. But there we go. Um, that's it. 23 minutes of video so far. This is what we've got. This is an effective piece of terrain. Now you can go to the next step. You can add different colors to it. You can add more weathering. I'm going to come along later and add some uh, metallic chipping into the uh, metallic surfaces running up and down here. I didn't even go into needing to use the tweezers or anything like that. Um, but I'll, I'll save that for another video because it will come up. And for now, we can just enjoy our bit of temple terrain here, this sort of almost concrete-like column. And uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Again, guys, terrain... It doesn't need to be daunting. This is a hobby for you to enjoy, and that is key at the end of the day. Enjoy yourself. Make it simple, make it quick, get some nice looking stuff on the board, and later on when you wanna make your dream table that looks like something out of a Games Workshop commercial or something, or out of White Dwarf, go ahead and do it. Take the time to do it. But don't do yourself the disservice of setting a massive goal of building a a six foot by four foot city fight table that's completely layered in terrain and necromunda stuff and it's over the top because it'll probably be too overwhelming for you. 
you, you'll, you'll go, you know what, I don't feel confident doing this. It'll go on the back burner, it'll sit there for years, not getting done. Keep the techniques simple. You can do the same technique with spray paints um, just by using silver spray paint, okay? You could paint anything in different colors of metallic spray paint. And then you go along and by the time you chip it and you add rust effects and such, it'll look really effective. Anyway, I'm back with the outer circle. Thank you all for watching. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you all again next time.